Hello, my knitting superstars. Welcome to this webinar. The three tips all knitting superstars need to know. Let's get started. I'm Liat Gat. I'm the founder of Knit Freedom, which is a website where you can look up clear and encouraging and high quality knitting videos so that you can become a confident and happy and curious knitter. This is what I often think about when I, I know that not all of you look like this, but this is what I'm going for. I love to be able to connect with my students over the internet and teach what I know um, so that people all around the world can get better at knitting and enjoy themselves more in every way. Erica, um, our customer service guru, and I will be answering your questions as soon as the webinar is over, so feel free to ask us below. The things that we're going to cover today have to do with the things that I think that every knitter should know if they want to become an amazing knitter. The first one is reading patterns. It's basically the language of knitting. The second one is how to knit in the round using whatever technique works best for you. I'm going to share my favorite. And then the attitude that you have towards your knitting and especially towards making mistakes and fixing mistakes. And then I'm also going to share with you a lot of resources that I've put together for you so that at the end of this webinar, you're going to walk away with um, a lot more understanding about the techniques that I'm talking about and also links and resources and downloads and patterns that you can refer to so that you can start start applying what you learned today to your knitting right now. Patterns are the language of knitting. Um, sort of like if you go to a foreign country, you're going to have a much better time if you are even just attempting to learn the language there. You're going to be able to understand what people are trying to tell you and sort of take part in uh, whatever that country has to offer and it's the same with reading knitting patterns and what I've shown here is a very complicated looking pattern it's of this sweater right in the middle it's a knit freedom design pattern coming soon um, on the left you can see a few out of the many pages of the pattern lots of sections lots of words lots of abbreviations and repetitions and on the right you can see part of the chart for the pattern um, and it is possible that it all looks quite complicated to you if that's the case it just means that you don't know how to speak the language yet but what I want to tell you is that um, as you improve your knitting if you learn about reading patterns at the same time and you improve your ability to read patterns as you improve your ability to knit you're gonna be able to knit something like this no problem you'll have the patience and the know-how to just go step by step and you'll know how to do these different techniques that are called for to put together something really spectacular like a custom fitted lace sweater like this. When you look at a pattern for the first time you may notice the different pieces of it and I think it's important to know what should be there in a standard pattern so that you can know what you're in for. So not all patterns conform to this standard just like most recipes show you the ingredients and they show you the steps and they tell you when to preheat your oven but if your friend just writes you down a recipe she's probably not gonna like make it all official so that is often the case with patterns that you find online is that they're not quite written with all of the information that you need so it's good to know what you are looking for so that you can know maybe what's missing um, and also just be better prepared when it's time to go knit the pattern. This is my free basic pattern for a uh, magic loop, which is just a way of knitting in the round. It's a basic beginner hat. At the beginning of the pattern, before we even get to the size piece, are notes about the pattern. And just like a recipe, this can tell you the story of how the person thought of the pattern or your options when knitting the pattern. And for instance, here, um, I tell you that the hat starts from the brim so and then finishes at the top so you can sort of get an idea of how it's knitted and then also that you can use lots of different yarns 
and they're all going to look good. So to get you inspired to start thinking about the choices that you're going to make. The first sections are the size and the finished measurements. Um, the sizes would be something like here I have one size fits most. Often it's like small, medium, large. It's basically the sizes available in the pattern. Um, and then in the finished measurements, it'll tell you what size that those turn out to be. So for instance, um, for something more complicated like a sweater, it would say sizes, small, medium, large, and it might even tell you what that might be like um, 32 inches across the bust, 36 inches, and 38 inches, or 40 inches across the bust. That would be like the size of the body part or the person. Um, and then the finished measurements tell you actually how big the garment is going to be because just like this hat, like knitting is stretchy and you have to realize that just because you knit something a certain size doesn't mean that you want it to be the exact size of your body part. For instance, this hat, it comes out 16 inches around before you stretch it and then once you stretch it on, it fits on a hat head up to 22 inches around. So it's often the case with sweaters if you are going to have like a baggy sweater or a tight sweater. Um, you want to, then this is a concept called ease, which I teach more um, in some of the courses that I offer. Um, but suffice it to say that you may want to measure your own hat and your own head or whatever to make sure that you're on track. The materials needed are an important part because you're going to want to look there before you go to the yarn store. First you're going to want to see if it's, um, you know, if the, the yarn store sells the kind of yarn that it's calling for. And the most important part of this is the weight of the yarn, the thickness. Here it's calling for worsted weight yarn, which is a medium thickness, it's very common. And it's also calling for 150 yards, so which is about one skein normally. Um, uh, and it will actually usually tell you how many skeins was, were used of the, of the example yarn to knit that sample like I've shown you here. So it's important to know how much yarn you need. Um, you can go to the yarn store and, and ask for that exact yarn or more likely all your choices that would work. Um, work instead of it if they don't have it or if you don't like it. Um, and I teach you more about choosing yarns um, um, on my blog and in some of my courses, which I'll tell you about later. Um, but this is where you would start. When you come to the needles, remember that the size of needle that is recommended in your pattern isn't actually necessarily the needle size that you need to get the gauge that's required, which is the size of the stitches. Um, if you knit looser than the person that wrote the pattern, you might need a smaller needle than they did. So don't get too caught up in what size they say. I mostly ignore it because, um, well, we'll get to gauge in a minute, but um, just know that the size of your stitches when you knit is what matters and it's correct, <laughs> no matter what it is, as long as you like the look of them. Anyway, continuing on. The notions would be anything like, uh, apart from these common ones, they would be something like buttons or a pom-pom maker or, um, you know, ribbons to embellish or anything like that that you might want to pick up while you're at the store. The gauge is a really important piece um, and you want to make sure that your pa if the garment has to fit on you as opposed to like a scarf or a teddy bear that it doesn't really matter if it's like too big or too small. Um, is to look at your gauge and I have videos on how to make a swatch and check your gauge um, but here's where you see what it ought to be for the garment to come out how you expect. The abbreviation section is a good way of knowing whether the pattern might be challenging for you or not because you can look at it and see if you know the know the abbreviations what they mean and if you know how to do the actual techniques. I guess it's sort of like um, if you're learning a new language like Spanish and um, at the beginning of the chapter it'll tell you these are the vocabulary words that we're going to learn in this chapter. And if you know them all you're like oh this is going to be easy. So you don't have to know the abbreviations beforehand. As a matter of fact as long as you don't choose a pattern with a lot of them that you don't know this is a good way to learn them little by little. Because I, I recommend that you increase your pattern knowledge as you increase your knitting knowledge. So all you have to do is when you don't understand an abbreviation is go look it up in a dictionary. And I have a video knitting dictionary that I'm going to give you a link for that shows you not only what the abbreviation means but how to do the technique. Um, but you can also Google it if for some reason you don't find it on my site. Um, 
So scan over the abbreviations. It does not mean that you can't do the pattern if you don't know the abbreviations. Rather, that you know means that you're going to learn them. The pattern instructions is the main body of how to knit the actual garment. Um, and it actually may be broken up into different sections itself, like this one right here. Um, the more complicated the pattern is, hopefully they'll break it up into different sections for you. A hat is mostly made up of ribbing and a body and a top where it gets narrower. But for a sock, it might be the, the, the ribbing, the cuff, the heel, the foot, and the toe, for instance. So you can also look over that and see, picture it being knitted and see what's going to happen. And um, all these options and abbreviations and parentheses, they do get more complicated as you go, but if you look in my dictionary, I tell you exactly how to read it. The finishing section um, will just tell you anything that you need to know to finish the pattern. Something like whether you need to block it or not, which is just soak it in water and lay it out flat. Um, whether you're going to need to seam up the pattern. This definitely comes into play with like a purse or a teddy bear, something that's three-dimensional. Um, It'll tell you what seaming techniques they recommend, or if you need to put on buttons, or ties, or handles, or any sort of buckles, or anything like that. They're going to detail it there. Um, and I also have, I have free videos on how to do almost all this stuff. This is an important question. Um, how do you pick the right pattern for you? I always recommend Picking something, if you can't, that is just a tiny bit more challenging than what you feel comfortable doing, just a titch. Um, it would be like playing tennis against someone tennis against someone who is just a little bit better than you. And um, when you are at that level of challenge, it's really fun. Um, it's what the, psych so the psychologists call flow. So you can get into the project, but you don't get overwhelmed because it's too hard, and you don't get bored because it's too easy. So... If you think back to the patterns that you've been knitting, um, have they been too easy for you? Um, I mean, it's okay to have easy patterns to bring with you when you don't want to pay attention. Um, and it can be frustrating to have only patterns that are very challenging. But I realized that it's not like there's a big sign at the yarn store that says, if you know how to do this, here's what you may want to try next. It's really up to you. Um, so I put together this tree of techniques and patterns to show you just as an example of the kinds of projects that you'll be knitting um, before you can knit other projects and maybe to show you that you don't actually have to wait any longer before you knit more advanced projects. So let's take a closer look at this tree. Just want to zoom in for you. You can see that on the trunk it shows that things kind of have to go in order. There's a pretty um, standard order of techniques that you learn and projects that you'll probably make when you start out, but then all of a sudden right here in this sweet spot, you can start knitting a lot of cool things. And I love helping people get to this point where their knitting just expands and explodes with all the things that suddenly, even if you don't know how to do them, you know that you'll be able to do them when you, when you try. You know you'll be able to learn. So starting at the bottom, and, and I'm going to be giving you this with some notes on it in your email after this webinar. The very first project that you'll probably make is a garter stitch scarf, which is just all knit stitches. Then you'll learn the purl stitch and you can do something like a ribbed scarf, just a knit one purl one ribbed scarf. Then you can combine the knit and purl stitches um, in other kinds of scarves. This right here is a mistake rib scarf just a little bit more of a complicated ribbing and you'll already hopefully start to read more complicated patterns. I mean read patterns that are for this which so I guess that would be very beginner patterns and with them learn how to fix beginner knitting mistakes. I always want you to be making the beginner mistakes or be making the mistakes and reading the kinds of patterns that go with the kinds of projects that you're making. It's going to support you as you continue to challenge yourself. So after a knit and purl combination scarf like Mistake Rib, you'll probably do a dishcloth right here, something where you can learn some very basic increases and decreases, um, which are ways to make your knitting wider and then make your knitting thinner. And also the patterns and the abbreviations that go along with those different techniques. Then you can do more complicated stitch patterns, just still with knitting and purling, um, but you'll also learn how to slip stitches. 
which can help you make really cool designs very easily. So just with knitting and purling and slipping, and by now you'll also start to recognize what's a knit stitch, what's a purl stitch. You may learn other stitch combinations like seed stitch or moss stitch, um, just all knit and purl combinations. A striped scarf is always a good project to up your ability level um, a little bit more because that's two balls of yarn, not at the same time, but you learn how to alternate between balls of yarn. And once you can do that, you can do projects like this mosaic pillow, which is a pattern that I'll have coming out for you in the future. Um, mosaic knitting is a way to knit with two colors for beginners. And as you can see, it looks really cool. You can't tell that it's a beginner project. So it uses two yarns and slipping stitches and knitting and purling and reading a little bit more complicated of pattern, a little bit. And then we get to this sort of magic turning point. Right here is knitting in the round. A hat is knitted in the round, it's just a round tube. And once you learn, once you take on the challenge of knitting something that's 3D, like a round tube, other than knitting just a flat thing like a scarf or a pillow front or a pot holder or a dishcloth, things start to really open up for you. You'll make lots of mistakes, you'll learn how to read more complicated patterns, and, um, and I think you'll start to prove to yourself that you can do more difficult things. So this is just at the base of th where the tree starts to branch out. Once you start knitting a hat, once you've knitted a hat, you can start to explore projects. I mean, you don't have to wait, but you may want to explore projects like socks. And socks are not as hard as you may think. And if you've taken my sock classes already, you may know how you surprised yourself with your abilities to knit socks just by staying calm and following the directions, learning some new techniques. You learn so many techniques when you knit socks. Um, for instance, short rows, wrapping and turning, new increases and decreases, um, seaming like Kitchener stitch or new cast ons and bind offs like a, a toe up cast on and a stretchy bind off. Um, I mean, don't let that overwhelm you. Just it's a, it is um, a foundational place to, to start really branching out. So once you, and I have classes on all this stuff and I'll give you links to all these patterns, which are mostly free. So once you start knitting socks and realizing that you can uh, read more complicated patterns, you can branch out to other round things like mittens here, just another form of tube. Um, you can also knit lace, easy lace projects. Um, you can go to intermediate lace projects. You can do a lace hat, for instance, combining two of the things that you already learned. You can also go the other direction and with the two colors and learn uh, fair aisle knitting, which is knitting with two colors. Again, not as hard as you might think. Don't wait until you've been knitting for years and years to try this. So here's an easy felted bag pattern. Um, and then if you like that, you can go further. You can do fair aisle mittens combining two techniques that you've already learned, um, or a fair isle hat. Again, increasing the difficulty in the same vein of what you are already enjoying. You can also do other easy felted projects like uh, a regular purse or slippers. I love felted projects because it's just one other way that you experiment with your knitting and realize that you can do more kinds of things. So obviously, if you've ever washed a wool sweater in the washing machine on hot, you have accidentally done felting. So it's as easy as that. Um, and you may learn how to sew things together. Whoops. So here is another more complicated Fair Isle project. This is uh, one that you would knit using a chart. It's just a pillow cover. And I actually knitted this back when I was very first started and I made a lot of mistakes on it. But um, if you like knitting with two colors, you can do something like this, a more complicated chart. It's still flat. It's just a pillow front. Um, more two color type knitting stuff is shown here, like a double knitted scarf goodness, um, knitted with two yarns and you can see it's reversible. And here is an even more advanced technique which is uh, two color brioche knitting, which is basically like a thick, bouncy, double-sided two color rib that you can do uh, scarves and cowls and um, all sorts of things with. And it's double thick. Um, coming over here to the other side of other sort of specialized techniques, you can do, you can start doing entrelock, which is just it uses some of the techniques that you would learn on socks, like turning your work back and forth in the middle of the row, called short rows, um, and picking yarn choices. Look here, this person picked yarn that slowly changes color. What a brilliant choice. The whole scarf looks really good, and it's only one yarn. So, um, and here, this is a technique called Mobius knitting, where you actually put twists in your 
round knitting on purpose to make sort of like an infinity loop, or this is five infinity loops. These are felted bowls. So we have round knitting, felting, and then a new technique, which is Mobius knitting. Um, you can also start embellishing things onto your projects, like with crochet or with knitting um, flowers and fringes and handles and um, other things to sort of personalize your knitting and realize that you don't always have to follow the pattern exactly. A lot of people uh, want to knit sweaters, and I think it's definitely a step up. I'll show you my first sweater at the end of this webinar, a picture of it. It's terrible, but wonderful. So here's a basic pullover that you would want to start with. Um, it, it's a basically a big rectangle with sleeves and um, just not even any kind of collars or, uh, or cuffs. And then once you have done that, you can move on to custom sweaters. Here's me wearing a custom fitted sweater with like a, a, a square neckline, uh, set in sleeves, uh, flared, flared cuffs, like tight around the middle. Um, that you know was custom fitted to my measurements and um it just builds on the skills that you've already learned you can even then go to something crazy like you know anything you want basically as far as garments goes things that require you to use a sewing machine to put things together at the end or like ribbons and straps and and, and buckles and hardware and um and also things that have a lot of size options for you um over here you can see the sort of stuffed fun animal section. Doing a teddy bear like this is another way to step your skills up more because you have to sew a lot of it together at the end or just follow a lot of steps. Um, here are fun things that you sort of that I've embellished on my own sort of freeform embellishing adding to things to make them my own. Um, you know adding buttons, adding embroidery, adding ears, whatever it is, realizing that you can add shapes and change your choices based on what you know. And, and then once you continue to get better, you can do little tiny stuff like this that has um, a lot of steps, a lot of sewing, and is made with little tiny yarn, like this mouse or the octopus that is um, sort of the, the height of tiny and painstaking, uh, challenging stuffed toys. Um, here is, over here, we have like also little yarn, but this is a fine lace shawl that's a big project, it takes a long time, and it's also knitted with a chart. So as you learn to read charts, you can do more more complicated stuff like beautiful lace shawls that you may have seen hanging up in your yarn store. And then also speaking of knitting with some more challenging materials, you can even start knitting with with wire and adding beads and, and you know knitting with all sorts of things that you didn't think possible. This is a votive holder. And lastly, at the top of the tree, is um, this little mitten right here, fingerless mitten, which represents buying yarn at the yarn store and coming home and making your own pattern out of it for your own custom measurements based on what you know about all these projects and all and your yarn and, and everything, putting them together in a project that you have made all by yourself. So there you have the tree of techniques all of this is well within your reach and more. I mean, these are just examples, um, but I want to show you that, you know, it's worth getting these foundations right, especially up to here, especially knitting in the round and knitting socks, um, so that then the sort of, the entire world of knitting is open to you. So there are three ways, just to recap, that you can improve and, and, and challenge yourself without getting overwhelmed. The first one is to challenge your patience and this would be like with a pattern that has a lot of steps. Maybe it's all techniques that you already know but it's like three pages long. It's covered with knits and pearls and knits and pearls. Um, so that would challenge your patience to just take it one step at a time. Um, know you can do it and uh, maybe like you know, write down where you are or cross off or highlight or keep track of where you are without getting, um, <clears throat> without getting lost. The second thing to challenge is your knowledge of knitting abbreviations, basically. Um, make it so that you know how to do everything, but you haven't really seen how it's all abbreviated. Um, so if you go to the abbreviation section and see three or four new abbreviations, that would be a nice challenge for your knowledge because you'd have to go look that stuff up before you can, or maybe again and again as you're knitting, um, 
to re- sort of memorize what they mean and what they are. One quick thing about reading abbreviations, if you're reading a pattern in your head as you knit, I recommend that you actually read out what the abbreviation means and don't say the abbreviation. Like if I see an uh, M1, that stands for make one, and I'm going to read to myself, you know, knit one, make one, not knit one, M1, um, because that sort of prevents you from telling your brain what it is that you actually need to do. The last thing is to challenge your hands. So to do a technique that you've never done before that involves you manipulating the yarn in a new way, maybe stopping in the middle, turning around, maybe combining more than two stitches at the same time, um, maybe adding adding new kinds of stitches like uh, increases and decreases, yarn overs, um, those would be good challenges for your hands. So just don't do all three at the same time because that can be really frustrating. It'll be like picking up, you know, an epic, an epic novel in the new language that you're just reading. So go little by little. Because you're a subscriber to Knit Freedom, I have given you everything I possibly can to help support you in your reading of patterns. As you go out into the world and find patterns that you want to knit, Come back to your member download area and come back to the Knit Freedom Knitting Videos page, which by the way is going to get vastly, vastly improved when our new site comes up soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, but you can you can put the you can put the stuff on your iPad. You can look at it on your phone. You can get to it. You can save it in your email. Whatever you want to, so that you feel confident. Just if you don't recognize the technique, going and just looking it up in the dictionary. And um, I'll be emailing you all this, all these details after the webinar is over. Like we talked about when we looked at the tree of techniques, knitting in the round is right at the middle, at the base of the branches. It's where you learn how to knit 3D objects. All these things are 3D, like the socks and the bags. They've all been knitted in the round. So once you start learning how to knit in the round, you're going to be able to knit all sorts of 3D objects. Um, it's very fun. The way that it's been done most of the time is with double pointed needles, which is abbreviated DPNs. You can see me knitting with them in the top left. Um, a lot of people knit this way and that's how I learned also. Um, but there are some issues with it that make it not, I think, as good. That make it not as good. I'm just going to come out and say it. <laughs> um, you can lose your needles. You can drop one down the side of the car. You um, you can see on the right that it's hard to try something on when you've knitted something on double pointed needles. Um, and I don't want you wasting your time knitting something hoping that it's going to fit, and then once you finish it, you realize that it doesn't. That is that is not a, an efficient way to go. So I prefer a technique that's called magic loop, and I love this technique. Um, you just use one long needle, and you can make any size of tube that you want, and it's really not hard. Um, and if you have tried it and you've found it challenging, I have some tips for you as well. So you can see the little tiny tube that I was able to knit with Magic Loop, and then the bigger, that's that's actually the hat that we saw in the hat pattern. That's the beginning of the hat. So big or small, giant, it doesn't matter, you can knit them all in the same needle. This is a question that I get asked a lot though, what needle should I buy? There are a lot of choices out there including uh, fixed needles like what you see at the top that are just attached to that cable in between and then um, interchangeable needles which um, come as a set which can be more economical if you're ready to buy the whole set it's like a set of knives like if you're ready or kitchen set if you're ready and you know you love it like it's better to buy the whole kitchen set um, I personally have the fixed needles in every size and um, of all the brands that are out there I like Addy Lace for beginners. Addy is the brand and Lace is the, the model. Um, you know that they're the Lace because they have the golden tips on them. And you can go to your local yarn store or order them online. And um, if you go to your yarn store, you can ask to try them and see what they feel like. The gold coating makes it so that it's more grabby and it doesn't feel like your yarn is gonna like slip off your needle tips, which I know is something that is really nerve wracking. So especially if you're used to knitting with bamboo needles with wooden needles, it's going to feel a lot more secure if you go with these Addy lace needles than some of the other um, uh, slipperier needles. 
So size seven or uh, 4.5 millimeters is a good medium size. It means that if you grab a pair of these needles, you can go home, find some medium weight yarn and watch my free video and just uh, learn how to do it without having to get any more equipment. So make sure that you get a needle that's 40 inches long or at least 40 inches long, maybe 47 inches would be the longest. Um, and that's going to, I wouldn't want you, I mean, you can try it if you already have, you know, if you already have a needle and it's like 32 inches long, you can try that. But I think it's not quite enough cable to work with. This is one of the things that bothers people when they start learning Magic Loop that I get, you know, they tell me about Magic Loop. The cables are twisting up in front of my hands and that's why I don't like Magic Loop. So I'm here to allay that uh, that fear or solve that problem right now. So you do not have to put up with cables twisting in front of your hands. It doesn't have to be that way. So if you find them twisting up like that, here's what to do. Just take the needle with the cable twisting up towards you like that and twist the needle away from you. All the way back like that so that it's totally away from you. And if it doesn't want to do that, if it's like this still twisting up, it may be that the cable is too long because what you want to do, have is both sides even, both lengths of cable even. So take the short end and just pull it so that the loops are the same size. Then they will be happy to curl away from you and they can just be under your hands. So this is what it should look like while you're knitting Magic Loop. Um, and you know, if you're new to this technique or don't even know about knitting in the round, just look and notice that it's a little round circle that I'm knitting. The cables just come out between the stitches. This is the last tip that I have for you um, for being a knitting superstar. And I think it's really important to, to have the right attitude when you knit towards, towards yourself and your learning. Um, when I first learned how to knit, I didn't, it didn't really occur to me to doubt that I'd be able to do the things that the book said. Um, but I do see a lot of my students having difficulties, especially when they make mistakes and taking it as a sign that the technique was too hard for them or they're not good enough to do it, um, or just getting really frustrated and, and, you know, wishing that they hadn't made the mistake. So I would like to help you stop with the suffering as far as your knitting goes. So what I have for you is the knit formula. And this little formula started out when I went, um, onto like a, a national publicity tour in 2013 to spread my story about how knitting saved my life. I needed a, a, a little formula, a little snappy thing to say at the end of my segments that sort of encapsulated my philosophy for knitting. And I came up with this knit formula, which funnily enough, I have, I, and also like a lot of my friends and people that know it have used in, in their lives to help not just with uh, not just with knitting. So, and I may tell you a small little story at the end of this. We'll see if we have time um, about that. So the first letter is K for no, you can do it. And the I don't mean like telling yourself you can do it, you can do it when inside you're like, no, I can't. I mean like thinking back to when you've done hard things before and remembering remembering that you were able to do it, like uh, uh, knowing because of your past experiences. So this is going to be one that you build up as you get better at knitting. You didn't know something, you learned how to do it, and now you know you can do it. So that in the future, when you come across a technique that's like, that you're like, oh my god, like what is, oh my god, I don't even know what that is. Just be like, even though I don't know what it is, I know I can do it. And just listen to me telling you, I know you can do it. Just like you would tell a six or seven or eight year old, that you might be teaching a new skill to. Um, you have the ability. This one is very important, no freaking out. When you feel yourself freaking out, that's the time to summon up this part of the knit formula and just know that um, you stay calm. Like I have videos that will help you know fix almost all of your mistakes and, um, and, and know that it's not a sign that you shouldn't have done what you did. As a matter of fact, it's sort of a sign from the universe saying, um, you're ready to learn something new. You know, if you make a mistake, it's because you were challenging yourself. So it's fantastic. It's good news. Um, I know, and it may not feel like it, and you may be 
thinking that um, it's a disaster and you have to stop knitting and now you have to go to the yarn store and um, this whole thing was not even worth it. Or, But you can, you know, you see how these thoughts really start to build up and stress you out. So I also recommend just having a couple of projects, at least one of them that's really easy so that if you do have to stop and you don't have the patience to fix it right away, you get too upset, just put it down. And if you still want to keep knitting, you have an easier project with you. Um, and uh, I'll give you resources at the end of this webinar for how you can learn about how to fix mistakes, but you can't fix them if you freak out. So that's the first step. Being intrepid to me means continuing on in the face of adversity. So, you know, if I were on this ropes course that we see and I don't know, like I tried the first time and it didn't work and I was like all falling through, like it would be like going back and trying again. Um, being intrepid is, is, is what you do when, um, only when something is hard. You can't be intrepid when you get something right the first time. It doesn't count. So um, it's a quality that you exhibit in the moment when you want to, when you want to give up, and I'm not saying that you have to keep on with something that is not working out at the moment, not at all, but um, but just don't expect yourself to get it right away if you're just learning something. Um, I've been rehabbing an injury that I had. If you've been a a long time uh, reader, you'll know that I had a, a back injury, and I finally started learning some ways to to stand better and sit better and move my body better. But um, they're not well. They're, they're not my habits. And so as I'm, you know, walking around and taking little tiny steps and trying to practice my new ways of being, I kept on reminding myself of this be intrepid concept because, um, cause I knew I wasn't going to get it on the first try, but I just sort of pictured a montage in my head of me getting better, but you have to keep on trying in order to keep getting better and making the montage like come true. This last one, transform your mistakes into victories, is probably like a 180 from the way that you might be thinking about mistakes. Now, first of all, with knitting, the amazing thing is you can always go back and undo any, quote, mistake that you made. So unlike life where you can't go back, um, even though you might want to, this is no big deal in knitting. Um, and like I said before, when you make a mistake, it is a sign that you are challenging yourself and that you're ready to learn something new. So when you transform your mistakes into victories, this is what it sounds like. You make a mistake instead of being like, no, no, no. You go, yes, yay. Uh, I, I finally, I, I realized where I need to improve or here's where I need help or this is what I don't ever want to do again or whatever it is. Try, find a way literally to transform it in your mind um, and it's going to feel a lot better in your heart and you'll be ready to take on the challenge. So I will tell you a secret because we have enough time. Um, I had to use this knit formula on myself just, just a few minutes ago. Earlier today, I recorded a really important video. It was like 25 minutes long. Um, and after I finished it, it turned out it didn't record. And I wanted to be like, wait, what? No. No, 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 no. And I really put my heart into the video and just like, you know, we do into our knitting projects. And I remembered my knit formula because I knew I was going to come on this webinar and talk to you guys about it and about being brave and staying calm and not freaking out and transforming your mistakes and all that. And so I was just like, this was a fantastic opportunity to do a dry run for my video. Oh, I was so glad that it wasn't recording. And um, I felt a lot better than I would have if I had just, um, if I had freaked out. So just so you know, I am right there with you. I'm walking the walk, 100%. Here's of my favorite example of, of a disaster that turned into a positive thing. This was my first sweater that I ever attempted, and I hated it when it was done. I mean, I wasn't upset, but I was like, oh my god, I'm never going to wear this. I picked a color that didn't look good on me, a shape that didn't look good on me. Um, I had to embroider fish onto it because I learned that when there's a knot in your skein of yarn, just because it comes from the store with a knot in it doesn't mean it's like a special knot that won't come undone in the wash. So I knitted with the knot and didn't take it out and two big holes opened up in the sweater. 
So I learned that. Thank God I learned that. Um, and I learned how to embroider stuff that's called um, duplicate stitch, uh, which I would love to teach you on Knit Freedom when I get a minute. Um, and But you can just Google it. So I learned how to embroider. I learned how to pick better colors for myself, better shapes, look at the kinds of sweaters. Not that look good on the models and the patterns, but that look good on me, the kind that I have in my closet that I already like. So... Um, I took those lessons and you can see that these are some of my projects on Ravelry sweaters that I made subsequently all have, you know, the bright colors that I like and the fit that I like and um, were, were wonderful challenges. So there's me, there's my example of uh, another transformation. So I know we've gone over a lot just now and I don't want you to feel like you have to remember it all. I'm, anything that you might want to explore further, I will be giving you links to, which includes, I'll give you this tree of techniques as a download, um, plus all the skills that you'll learn, plus links to the different patterns, um, plus links to the, the things that you might want to buy, um, and everything like that. And by the way, I never ever make any money, you know, giving you links to buying stuff. It's all just for you, just to, it's impartial. So um, that, that will be waiting for you, um, but I also have uh, another special thing. And that is when you are ready to get some extra help bringing your knitting to the next level. I know that when you're on your own, it is hard to learn all the things that you need to learn. So a lot of my students have talked about um, not really knowing what yarns to pick out, um, needing help with patterns, um, they need help with knitting in the round and maybe a lot of people have tension in their hands. You'll know if this is you, if you're knit really tight, but there are a lot of aspects to knitting that I'm not really able to cover with, um, with the, the video knitting dictionary and stuff. And so I wanted to show you what I made, uh, when I started this business to help knitters, um, like you that might need, that might want to start really learning a lot more. So I want to share this with you. And it's this video knitting course that I made called Become a Knitting Superstar. And this is actually the inside of the course. I'm just going to give you a sneak peek inside of it. Um, this is a class that has a lot of different modules to it. And basically, I take you through step by step, um, starting with reading patterns, working through knitting in the round. And I'll actually just show you. Um, it's an online course as well as a streaming video PDF, so you don't have to watch it online if you don't want. Um, so here is what's in it. We have patterns and techniques, so you can learn about um, the more about the pieces of a pattern. I mean, everything that you need to know about reading patterns, basically. Um, and then we go to knitting in the round on magic loop. And not only do I um, teach you how to do it, but I give you a lot of tips. Um, as to how to do it faster and better and easier and all of the things that you might run into. Um, let's take a look at that. Big old peek. Oh yes, adapting any pattern, increasing and decreasing on Magic Loop. I, I always have you practice, every time I have you do something, I have you practice the pattern that would go with it, right? So, and then um, your loops of cable, you're pulling your first stitch too tight. Turn your knitting inside out. I don't know why these are all black squares. <laughs> Probably because I'm, there we go. There's a lot of videos on this in this course. Accidental yarn overs, getting pearl bumps. That's what happens when you go backwards. So anyway, it goes on. So you can see that there are a lot of, a lot of tips that go with each of the techniques that I teach you. Coming back here, then I move on to toe up socks, which like I told you earlier is so, such an important vehicle for learning new techniques. Um, and you can't really tell here, but um, there are so many things that you're going to learn when you knit toe-up socks that that's my that's sort of the foundation of this whole course and almost of the whole website. Then I go to top-down socks, which are a little bit more challenging. You learn um, other seaming techniques like Kitchener stitch, but not in a way that's frustrating. Um, and you learn... Uh, you learn how to do um, a heel flap and some other more advanced techniques. And then it's full of bonus chapters um, where I teach you how to do continental knitting, which is when you knit with your left hand, which I like because it's really ergonomic. Um, I give you 10 videos on how to knit faster. And then I teach you how to fix the top 10 knitting mistakes. Um, and I actually even have, there's more in there. 
there are top 10 lists about um, the top 10 books that you might want, um, uh, top 10 resources. There's just, it's just jam packed with, um, with, oh, and then we have patterns and handouts and illustrations. Um, for instance, if you like to read, learn from illustrations, um, there are illustrations that you can print out like on, uh, on magic loop, bind offs, these are, whoops, kitchener stitch, all of the things that you might want to print out and, and have it near you as you work. Um, so this is what I want to share with you is that, uh, is that you may feel like this now, but honestly, I know that you can really be a superstar. I believe in you and you just need, um, the right guidance. So let me, I would love to let you have you, let me take you by the hand and, and give you sort of almost a personalized knitting course. Um, that will turn you into a very, very good knitter. Mm, this is a picture that a Knit Freedom student posted on our Facebook page. This is what happens when you do the Knitting Superstar course. She is knitting four socks at one time there. I guess that's out by her lake house or whatever, but um, just drink it in. Doesn't it look great? So she, you can be doing stuff like this too. This absolutely is within your reach or whatever it is that tickles your fancy. So just to recap, what's in the course that I'm, uh, that I made for you is classes on magic loop, toe up. Oh, here you can just read it. That's what's in it. There we go. I know you can read. So check this out. Here's my special deal for you. Um, on this page, I have a special deal and I'm actually going to go to the page um, and show you what we have got for you. So Become a Knitting Superstar is on sale right now for the next 48 hours for you because you attended this webinar. It's 30% off. Definitely the cheapest that it's ever been. So here's the page that you're going to get to um, when you click through that link I gave you and I'll email it to you also. Um, and this is just for you to learn, to, to take a look through here and learn to see if this is going to be right for you. Um, I made it for knitters just like you and, um, and, oh, it's also hundred percent guaranteed. If you don't absolutely love it and learn a ton, you just email us, we give you your money back. Um, you know, no questions asked. Like I want you to, um, I want you to have a great experience. So that's why I made this course. Um, if you want a little a bit more of a thorough tour inside, you can watch the video, learn about some of the um, some of the fun tips and pieces that are included, and then also read more about the classes, the actual modules that are included, and and why I included those for you. So um, come to this page, check it out. I hope you take advantage of this deal. It's a hundred percent guaranteed. Um, and uh, let's wrap this up. There's one more thing. Yes, just <laughs> here's your special deal. That's right. Okay, so what we did is we took 30% off the Knitting Superstar course with all those books included. And then also, if you want, if you do take advantage of the Knitting Superstar course deal, we're also putting two of our other courses that are like intermediate level courses as well, also on sale for 30% off when you get Knitting Superstar. That's an option for you. So two at a time mittens, if you want to learn mittens, and the how to knit cables, it's actually how to knit cables with or without a cable needle video courses. So those are two other intermediate techniques that I would highly recommend that you dig into. And you are going to be able to knit so much so much cool stuff. I mean, then you can just start combining things, right? Cabled hats, cabled mittens, um, you know, toe up. You'll be able, you'll be ready to knit lace. You'll be ready to knit uh, the more advanced projects that I showed you. So please go check it out. 48 hours. Go forth. Be a superstar. Thank you so much for coming tonight. I love you all. See you next time.